Imagine keeping a secret so large that you need an architect's help to keep up the charade. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Before we dive in, go ahead and leave a like on this video to let YouTube know that you enjoy videos about these old houses. Richard Upjohn, a British-born architect who moved to the United States in the early 19th century, played a pivotal role in shaping American architectural taste. While he might be best remembered as co-founding the American Institute of Architects, or perhaps for his designs, including iconic churches, he was also a proponent of the Italianate style, which gained widespread popularity around the U.S. in the mid-1800s. In 1858, an Alabama plantation owner and cotton factor by the name of Edward Kenworthy Carlyle wrote to Upjohn asking him to design a modern house that would stand out from all the other plantations. Carlyle did not want a house rooted in tradition as he saw himself as a modern man going against the grain. He wanted something that reflected his values and made a statement. Carlyle was publicly against slavery and advocated for abolition. He vowed to never purchase or sell another human being, but was happy to make a fortune off of plantation owners who used slave labor to produce their cotton. When his wife inherited dozens of slaves, instead of freeing them and sending them north as he had previously advocated, he decided to keep them and labor them on his own plantation. He amassed a fortune playing both sides with no one being the wiser, and later on when the Civil War broke out, he made a fortune overcharging both sides for his services in cotton. Being able to play both sides meant having an estate that could fool visitors. Richard Upjohn designed a large house where none of the slaves would ever be seen by guests in the public rooms. In a time when most laundry rooms were included in the basement, Upjohn strategically placed it as an outbuilding connected by a loggia. With strategically placed trees, this completely blocked out the view of Carlisle's slave quarters and cotton fields from the main house, ensuring no one from the north would be able to call him out on his hypocrisy. As we enter the home, take note of the wide cross halls and large windows we will see throughout. This was Upjohn's solution to the sweltering climate, allowing for cross breezes to ventilate and cool the house through its core. Unfortunately, the house was only documented twice, so as we continue our tour we will see a mix of color and black and white photos. To the right of the grand staircase, we will find the octagonal library with its windows facing east to catch the morning light. Turning around, we find built-in bookcases designed by Upjohn, an early example of his transitional period from Gothic to Italianate styling. Next we find the parlor, designed with clean lines and scarce but effective ornamentation found surrounding the window and on the uppermost layer of the crown molding. Towards the rear of the house, we can step out onto the porch and make our way over to the door on the left side of the screen. This brings us into the kitchen, though by the time this photo was taken, it hadn't been used as such in quite a while. Let's go back outside and follow the loggia over to the outbuilding. Along the way, we can look off to our side to see the cistern. Entering the two-room building brings us to what was originally the washing and ironing room. We still have much more to see in the main house, so let's cut across the service yard and take the central door behind the staircase to continue exploring. This brings us back into the cross hall facing towards the front of the house. Let's turn around and take the grand staircase up to the second floor, admiring the null post, wood paneling, and decorative millwork all extensively detailed by Upjohn and his plans for the house. At the landing, the staircase splits below a large window and brings us to the second floor cross hall. Looking around, it is easy to imagine how grand it once looked before the plaster medallion eroded with time and before the millwork was painted. The Carlisle son had a spacious bedroom with large windows and his own fireplace which had been sealed off by the first time the house was documented. The Carlisles had the largest bedroom in the house, once again boasting an intricate marble mantle. Through the door on the left, we can see a twisting staircase. Let's go down to the first floor and explore the tower staircase where it is hidden from the public room, sandwiched between a bedroom and the dining room. This deep interior space is illuminated by a skylight three stories above us. The staircase allowed the slaves to move throughout the house discreetly, connecting to the family's bedrooms but not to the guest bedrooms. Making our way up to the very top of the staircase, we find the door to the tower, this is where the architecture gets a little tricky. From the outside of the house, the tower looks like it is only three stories tall, but it is actually four stories with hidden slave quarters. If we continue up the stairs we just saw on the floor plan, we arrive at the top of the tower, offering 360 degree views of the plantation. Following the Civil War, Edward Carlyle lost a significant portion of his fortune and the land the house sat on was devalued to less than half of what it was worth before the war. His family continued to use the property only as a summer residence over the next several decades, ignoring its much-needed maintenance. Even the subsequent owners had trouble keeping up with the house, and through much of the 20th century, it sat vacant and abandoned, becoming a popular spot for teenagers to hang out and vandalize the house. It lost its elaborate porches, holes were torn through the walls, the marble mantles were shattered, and the humidity ate away at the elaborate plasterwork. Finally, 
After almost a hundred years of neglect and deferred maintenance, it was purchased by the Martins, who spent nearly 23 years restoring Kenworthy Hall to its former glory. After sitting in ruin for decades, Kenworthy Hall had been given a new life as a private home. What did you think about Kenworthy Hall? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.